In the famous Hubble Ultra Deep Field image, if we go as far back as the deepest image ever captured in our universe, astonishingly, we can see a galaxy nearly 12.6 billion years old, or 12.6 billion years away. And as we get closer, we can see that this galaxy is still in the process of forming when the universe had only reached about 10% of its current age. Hubble had managed to capture almost 13 billion years of history in this one single image. I can only begin to speculate if Hubble could take such an incredible image that led to discoveries that have unlocked long-held mysteries about our universe. What will the James Webb, at 100 times the sensitivity and power and 6 times a light-collecting surface, reveal? What's up, Space Cadets? Uh, I know it's been a while. There's some stuff I want to talk about that's pertinent to what's going on right now. And of particular importance is the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope. On December 25th at 7.20 a.m., the James Webb Telescope was launched into space after 25 years of development and many launch delays and issues. So after much anticipation, we are all watching in excitement about what is going to be discovered by this telescope. This telescope is the biggest, most complex, most expensive telescope we've launched into space to date. And if the challenges that lay ahead on its journey to its final location go as well as hoped, it has the potential to uncover amazing secrets about our universe and our origins that we have long wondered about. The James Webb Space Telescope is appropriately named after James Webb, who was a government official in the 1960s who is said to have done more for science and had more accomplishments within the space industry than perhaps any other government official. Development initially began on the James Webb in 1996 with a $500 million budget. It was initially scheduled to be launched in 2007, but there were continuous delays, cost issues, and even a major redesign. And then when it was scheduled to be launched in 2020, coronavirus happened. The James Webb's development and subsequent launch has been painstakingly long and meticulous, not just because of the cost. It's expected to cost roughly $9.7 billion to NASA over the course of 24 years. And that's just NASA. That's not even including the cost of the Ariane 5 launch vehicle and instrumentation that was provided by the European Space Agency for the launch. The reason for such careful timing and precision of the James Webb launch is because of what we stand to gain from the success of its purpose and mission. JWST, we'll call it for short, is the successor of the Hubble Space Telescope with a giant mirror, or more accurately mirrors, that are six times the light collecting surface of Hubble's mirror. Hubble is well known for capturing amazing images of our solar system and galaxy, and even galaxies far beyond our existence. To include the Butterfly Nebula, the Tadpole Galaxy, Star Cluster NGC 602, Galaxy NGC 1300, protoplanetary disks in the Orion Nebula, the Mice Galaxies, the Helix Nebula, the Eagle Nebula, also known as the Pillars of Creation, and most notably, the deepest image we have today, the Hubble Ultra Deep Field. In 1995, Hubble was pointed to a random tiny spot in the sky equivalent to a grain of rice held at arm's length in the constellation Ursa Major and shot its original Hubble Deep Field, which combined 342 exposures over 10 days. Astronomers thought that this area of space was so completely dark and void of anything noteworthy, and yet, after 100 hours of observation and over the course of 10 consecutive days, the telescope gathered light from a region so unbelievably small and yet still so unbelievably packed with galaxy and star formation, astronomers had to completely reevaluate how they saw the cosmos. 
Astronomers were shocked that this small, seemingly insignificant area of space held over 3,000 galaxies. Again in 2004, the Hubble Ultra Deep Field was unveiled, which found a similarly small area of space in the constellation Fornax, containing over 10,000 galaxies. Some of these galaxies dated back to nearly a billion years after the birth of our universe, 13.7 billion years ago. One of James Webb's primary objectives will be to peer back into space and time to look back at the very first galaxies that were ever formed during what's known as the Dark Ages, which occurred from roughly 370,000 years until about a billion years after the Big Bang. The telescope, much like Hubble, will be like a literal time machine, giving us an idea of how the physics of the universe worked to create some of the first stars, galaxies, and galaxy clusters ever. Now, with that being said, JWST will have some primary differences and advantages that will allow astronomers the opportunity to see things that Hubble was not able to see. And in order to do that, it operates in infrared light. Infrared light is electromagnetic radiation with wavelengths that are longer than visible light but shorter than radio waves. Redshift and blue shift describe how light shifts towards shorter or longer wavelengths as objects in space move closer or farther away. So as we know the universe is expanding, many things are redshifting. However, the Andromeda galaxy is moving towards us and has a blue shift of about 186 miles per second. It's heading towards us and is expected to merge with the Milky Way galaxy in about 4 billion years. The further away a galaxy is, the more the light's wavelengths being emitted are stretched. What that means is their light is pushed from the UV and optical into the near infrared. So observations from distant objects, like the very first galaxies formed in the universe, require an infrared telescope. This is how we can determine the true distance of a star or galaxy, by how far its light is shifted into the red part of the spectrum. In the famous Hubble Ultra Deep Field image, if we go as far back as the deepest image ever captured in our universe, astonishingly, we can see a galaxy nearly 12.6 billion years old, or 12.6 billion years away. And as we get closer, we can see that this galaxy is still in the process of forming when the universe had only reached about 10% of its current age. The galaxy emits a red hue as it's so far away that its light is red shifting at expanding rates away from us. Hubble had managed to capture almost 13 billion years of history in this one single image. I can only begin to speculate if Hubble could take such an incredible image that led to discoveries that have unlocked long-held mysteries about our universe. What will the James Webb, at 100 times the sensitivity and power and 6 times a light-collecting surface, reveal? James Webb is so powerful, in fact, it is said to be able to take an image of something the size of a bee on the moon. And if it sat at the outer edge of the solar system, that's 100,000 astronomical units or 100,000 trips to the distance of the sun, which is 93 million miles away, it would be able to see images of city lights at night on Earth. There is a discovery that suggests that up to one in five distant galaxies from the epoch of the universe remain hidden from our telescopes because they are camouflaged by cosmic dust. So as these stars and planets form in clouds of gas and dust, the dust obscures our view. One of the advantages of infrared lighting is that it can penetrate these dust clouds and allow us to see more than we could have with other means. In fact, in the early 20th century, it was Edwin Hubble, the astronomer that the Hubble telescope was named after, who observed through redshifting that distant galaxies appeared to be moving away from us at faster velocities than closer and neighboring galaxies. This can be attributed to the forces of opposing dark energy and dark matter. Discovering more about dark matter and dark energy will be of particular importance and interest because of how little we know about it. And, and in fact, what we do know is that it's really important that we should learn more about it, considering it comprises literally 95% of all of the stuff in the universe. What we do know is that dark energy has the force of pushing apart space. And since space is accelerating, we know that there is more dark energy in the universe than there is dark matter. And in fact, we are able to determine 
that roughly 68% of the universe is dark energy and 27% is dark matter. And dark matter has the opposite force. It has a gravitational force on galaxies and other matter, and in fact, that's how we know that it's there at all, because we've never actually seen it. But its gravitational pull on stars and celestial bodies in the universe show that it is in fact there. That, and because of something called gravitational lensing. Gravitational lensing occurs when immense gravity of all this material warps the space around the cluster, which causes the light from objects behind the cluster to be distorted and magnified, almost as if looking through a giant magnifying glass. Because we know that the matter we see is not enough to sometimes cause this effect, we know there's something else there. This is why we call it dark. Not because it's dark, but because it's an unknown force, just as dark energy, which pulls objects in the universe apart at an accelerated rate. This is just one of the major mysteries of the universe that the James Webb Space Telescope will be able to help piece clues together about over time. What's most exciting about the James Webb Telescope is how soon it could be making important discoveries. Astronomers have been quoted as saying we may be entering a new era of astronomy based on some of the things this telescope may be uncovering very soon. I mean, we're talking months to just a few years. It'll uncover questions like, what did the early universe look like? When did the first stars and galaxies first emerge? How did they evolve over time? What can we learn about dark matter and dark energy? How do stars die and how do they affect the space around them? And where and how do planetary systems evolve? This is a protoplanetary disk. It's a rotating disk of dust and gas that surrounds the core of a newly forming star. These disks are created when dense gases that spew out from a dying star's supernova explosion create intricate nebulae and then collapse in on themselves and begin to spin and condense, creating baby solar systems and galaxies. These hot gaseous stellar nurseries are the literal birthplace to solar systems and galaxies like our own. As we look far back into space and time, the James Webb will be able to discover much more information about these newborn star systems than we've ever been able to collect previously. And I just find that to be so incredible. It'll take the telescope approximately a month to travel almost a million miles, that's about four times the distance of the moon, to the L2 point. I'm excited to say that currently the JWST is fully deployed and will be reaching its L2 destination on January 23rd. This is a spot in space where the gravitational forces of our planet and the sun are roughly equal, creating a stable orbital location for the telescope to do its thing. Because its mirror is so big, it had to be made of 18 individual segments so it could be folded for launch. Later, those segments will all need to be recalibrated and aligned. It's even deployed its five-layered tennis court-sized sun shield with vacuum insulation between each layer, which will help the telescope to operate at an optimal minus 370 degrees Fahrenheit. Finally, after six months of its first orbit completion around the L2 point, we will receive some of the first data taken by the telescope. If I piqued your interest on the James Webb Telescope, please look in the description below. I posted a link to a dashboard that NASA puts out where you can see all the details, temperature, distance, speed, and many other updates on the James Webb Space Telescope right on their website in real time. It's been shown that time and time again, investing in science and space education, research, and technology has an incredible long-term return both economically and culturally, and it is just generally good for the advancement of society. It really takes a far-sighted lens, pun intended, to be able to understand what astronomy accomplishes for society with these types of discoveries of our surrounding universe. Well, that about does it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm very sorry it took so long to get this out. I'm gonna try very hard to be better. I will let you know as soon as I get another video published. And please, if you haven't already, like, subscribe, comment, tell me what you thought. And until next time, keep looking up.